about the Pentagon a little bit. Um, the first is the Pentagon funding bill, the NDAA. Uh, one of the things happening in Congress right now is they're talking about amendments to the bill. And with all the anti-Russia rhetoric going on and uh, all the anti-Russia stories in the media, Russia's Russian aggression, Russia building up on Ukraine's border and everything, members of Congress are jumping over themselves to try to find ways to attack Russia through this bill. And so there's several different amendments targeting Russia with sanctions and specifically sanctions against the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, which is going to bring natural gas from Russia directly into Germany and not through countries like Belarus, which recently has threatened to cut off the gas throat through or Ukraine, which is notoriously corrupt. And, you know, this would bring Central Europe cheaper gas. And again, you wouldn't have to deal with uh, some of the uh, Eastern European straw men tyrants and uh, kind of nut jobs as presidents there. So in a way, this kind of sounds like it should be a good thing. Uh, but I, I think largely for mercantilist reasons, there are interests in the U.S. that do not want this to happen. It would prefer to put the uh, liquefied natural gas on these base ships and uh, bring it from the United States over to Germany that way. But of course, the pipeline uh, underneath, I think the Baltic Sea there is going to be a lot faster and uh, cheaper than the, the big ship option. So that's the reason that Germany is going this direction and doesn't want to be sanctioned by the U.S. However, the U.S. has, you know, talked about potentially sanctioning Germany over this, uh, in part because the U.S. has targeted the Russian energy center with sanctions. And so it would kind of follow this as, as you know, sanctions to put on uh, Germany. But again, also, I, I think there are just economic interests in the U.S. People don't want to lose out business when this pipeline becomes active. They want Germany to remain reliant on the U.S. for the natural gas. Now, the U.S. congressmen will constantly say, but we have to protect the German and European interests. And if Russia builds this pipeline, they'll become dependent on Russian natural gas. And don't you think that Germany would be the country to decide who they want to be dependent on natural gas for? Not some congressman in the United States who has never been to Germany. It's just it's unbelievable what these people will try to cook up to, to push their lives. We have Senators Gene Shaheen and Ron Portman suggesting that the NDAA should have an amendment with another $50 million in annual defense spending for Ukraine. Uh, the, you know, this is going to be military aid. Not exactly sure what they would be sending Ukraine, but javelin missiles or something like that uh and in any way looking to increase tensions between the u.s and russia and you know benefit uh i'm sure portman and shaheen's donors in the military industrial complex I have Bob Menendez, who's a pretty powerful senator. He's the head of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. He has introduced a bit, uh, an amendment to the NDAA that would trigger a cascade of sanctions against Russia, including on the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, if the president determined that Russia invaded Ukraine. Now, the important thing here is that, by the way, the U.S. looks at the world map. Russia has already invaded Ukraine with the annexation of the Crimean Peninsula. And so this seems to be a blank check war authorization from Congress to launch a massive economic war against Russia anytime the president would want to just change its interpretation of what happened on the Crimean Peninsula to claim that Russia invaded and was now occupying Ukraine, and we're going to sanction all of Russia's energy and uh, economic sectors and really put try to put the country under a blockade situation. Not only do I think it would be somewhat ineffective because Russia has already been heavily sanctioned by the West, and I think, you know, it kind of has looked to isolate itself from potential sanctions. You know, the more sanctions you put on a country, the less punch future potential sanctions could have just kind of by the way that sanctions work once you've sanctioned most of an economy threatening to sanction the little that's left is going to be less important especially because these countries realize that that they, they you know may have to rely on 
at least outside of the West options, if not only internal options for key, uh, you know, sectors like pharmaceuticals or stuff like that. Um, so again, I don't know how effective this would actually be in doing what the U S wants to do, but also it's a blank check to put massive sanctions on Russia. Anytime a president wants. All right, some other stories about the military. This one is very interesting. Uh, Camp Lejeune, which is in North uh, Carolina, is pretty disgusting, apparently. Uh, There's some Marines that put up a video, I think on TikTok, uh, walking around and kind of showing what the what the Barretts looks like, and it's pretty bad. And look, you know, for somebody who would say that when you're a Marine, you don't sign up to live in the nicest conditions, et cetera, et cetera. You know, Marines are tough and all that. I get it. Kind of agree with you. However, the U.S. spends a trillion dollars a year on its military. And the fact that, you know, the Marines Barretts are completely moldy and the F-35 doesn't fly shows that there's something very, very, very wrong at the Pentagon. And, uh, you know, the, this should just be further, you know, evidence of it. But rather, you know, it, it's kind of just wiped off as a joke, if nothing else. And, you know, people just should be absolutely livid that... You, you know, the not just that the Marines have to live in these conditions, you know, these are people, um, but uh, that, you know, obviously the money is being stolen by somebody because it's not going to where it should be going. Other Pentagon news, the Pentagon got taken and bought some fake or faulty Chinese body armor through a Texas distributor. Uh, the guy is now facing charges for it. And, you know, that that's fine that they caught it and everything like that. But, yeah, the Air Force got conned by some phony Chinese armor. We also had the Pentagon announcing that it will give Huntington Ingalls an additional $113 million uh, to its contract for the uh, a large amphibu- amphibious assault ship that it's building. Uh, the total cost of that ship will now be $651 million. Uh, this, you know, they claim the money is to enable long lead time material and advanced procurement activities. And this is mumbo jumbo. Uh, maybe, you know, they're claiming that things cost more now because of inflation. And that's why uh, maybe there's supply chain issues that they're concerned about. And they had to build new infrastructure for I don't know exactly what they're claiming that this money is for. For all I know, it's just going to go straight to the pockets of like the board of hunting and angles or something like that. We have the Pentagon once again awarding its cloud computing contract, although this one isn't called Jedi because the Jedi contract was terminated because Amazon, Microsoft, Google, and Oracle just kept suing each other over everybody getting awarded the contract. So... They now have the Joint Warfighting Cloud Capability, JWCC program, and to solve the problem of all these companies suing each other over not getting awarded the contract, they awarded bits of the contract to all these companies, Amazon Web Services, Microsoft, Google, and Oracle. Not sure what the breakdown, who's getting most of the money here. Hell, they may sue each other. You know, Oracle's mad that Google got a bigger chunk of the deal or something like that. But, you know, the the Pentagon said that this was absolutely essential, what, four or five years ago when they initially put out this contract. Now we are years later and they've allowed it to be stymied by these companies fighting with each other rather than just awarding it to one and saying deal with it or addressing the issues that actually come up in these lawsuits like the fact that Amazon or Either Amazon or Microsoft hired somebody who was working at the Pentagon, actually involved in the decision making on the contract, on the, you know, who would get awarded the Jedi contract. And they had that person under contract that they were going to come work at their company after. So, you know, the Pentagon could either resolve the revolving door issue. That way, not everything gets tied up in court 
or it could, you know, just say that this is absolutely necessary and we need it. I think it just goes to show what a farce the whole system is and, you know, how little they actually need this technology. They claim that every American will die and be a slave of the Chinese if we don't have. And it's just, you know, all giveaways and to their friends and, you know, former colleagues in the military industrial complex. Lockheed Martin's testing its new AIM-260 uh, Joint Advanced Tactical Missile. Uh, it's AIM-260 or JATM. It's a pretty secretive weapon. Don't know a lot about it, but we do now know that they are testing it. Of course, you know, it's always presented in the U.S. whenever Lockheed Martin's testing or Raytheon is testing a new missile. Oh, hey, cool. Look at the new military technology. But when Russia tests a missile, it's the Russian aggression is testing a, mili uh, a new military weapon to enslave the world. And and all this crazy uh, stuff, you know, that it, it doesn't go both ways. All right. So the, there's this uh, facility in Pearl Harbor, uh, Red Hills, I, I believe. Yep. Red Hills. And they store thousands and thousands of gallons of fuel in these tanks. I think they're like go all the way back to World War II. If you see the pictures here, you'll absolutely believe me that they're that old. And the tanks are increasingly leaking. Uh, the military first said, ah, oh, nah, this time it's just leaking water. Uh, but then, yep, they found out that fuel had actually been leaking as well. One of the problems here is that it's near an aquifer, I believe, but some kind of groundwater area that's important for drinking water for people uh, you know, on, on the island. And so uh, the fact that, it, you know, it's potentially leaking into there is a real problem. This kind of like the Camp Lejeune is just unacceptable. You know, the, the these branches of the military have tens, hundreds of millions of uh, billions of dollars to spend a year. And then they can't, you know, prevent the the fuel from contaminating and poisoning the people's drinking water you know they say the military has to be there to protect us more often than they protect us they're actually poisoning us all right last story on the military i have and i don't want people to get too excited or take it too seriously but i do think it's worth mentioning and talking about briefly and that is the new pentagon office to look into uh, UFOs, or I forget what they call them now, uh, unidentified airborne objects, maybe. Uh, but the new office will be Airborne Object Identification and Management Synchronization Group, and it will be nested under the office of the Undersecretary of, for Defense and Intelligence. Don't know exactly who's going to head it up yet. My sense is that uh this is going to end up being more of a gener generating a little bit of propaganda for more war spending stuff like that i don't think they're actually going to like uncover ufos or anything like that or that the pentagon is like worried about an alien invasion and that's why they're coming up with this office my sense is that it's going to be to fabricate intelligence for more defense spending whether it's you know more likely at russia china or some kind of you know other et or something like that 